Does the um, jury system still work in this country for criminal justice? Well, I think it does, but it does not, it seems, in high-profile trials that involve the issue of race. Now, it's just come out that Brandon Mitchell, one of the jurors in the Derek Chauvin trial, uh, is not who he said he was. He's not an impartial juror. In fact, it's come out that this guy was at a Black Lives Matter event in Washington, D.C. last summer. A photo was posted on social media. It shows this Sir Brandon Mitchell, who's an African-American. He went to a so-called March on Washington at which George Floyd's brother and sister, Phil Anise and Bridget Floyd, were the speakers. Uh, and not only that, but Mitchell in the photo is shown wearing a T-shirt, and the T-shirt has the following phrase on it. Get your knee off our necks. In other words, here's a guy with very strong opinions and feelings about George Floyd um, and about the trial. Uh, and these are the feelings that he took in with him. In fact, in an interview, he even makes the point, uh, his uncle posted the photo, by the way, um, and he makes the point that he, um, he, first of all, had a chance to make history. That's why he was at the march. He felt that a historical event was going on. And he also said that he had seen the Floyd video before the trial and, quote, uh, didn't need to know much else. In other words, he was ready to find Chauvin guilty before the trial. Even. And these are the views that this guy, Brandon Mitchell, took into the trial. Wow. Now, this, I think, is really crushing. Um, the, uh, by the way, Derek Chauvin's lawyers have already filed a motion for a new trial, but that was not in response to this. They were actually talking about the way in which the pre-trial publicity and the crowds gathered outside the courtroom created an atmosphere of prejudice and intimidation. So I can only imagine what they're going to make of this. You have a guy, a, a juror, and by the way, this um, um, Brandon Mitchell was asked these questions uh, when he, in the voir dire, in the, in the jury interrogation process, they asked him very specifically. Uh, let's look at a couple of the questions here. Uh, they talk about the fact that, did you, do you have an opinion about the trial uh, and about, uh, about um, uh, Derek Chauvin? And uh, basically, Mitchell goes uh, that he, he was undecided. Yes, he could, he could be impartial. They asked him, did you participate in any events that would be seen as prejudicial? He didn't made no mention of having been in D.C. He made no mention about his T-shirt, you know, get your knee off our backs. I am sure he would have been thrown off the jury had he done this. Now, of course, he says, oh, no, this wasn't really a march for Floyd. It was just kind of a march on Washington. Uh, yeah, but it was a march on Washington for what reason to express solidarity with George Floyd? And that's why the speakers were who they were. Now, all of this is coming on top of another little tidbit, which hasn't gotten as much publicity, but is equally revealing and kind of establishes the pattern I'm trying to show here. This is actually from The Wrap. Uh, apparently, National Public Radio did a, uh, interviewed one of the jurors in the O.J. Simpson case. This is going all the way back to 1995, I believe. Uh, and in this series, which, was, which came out on ESPN, by the way, it was called O.J. Made in America. And an excerpt was played on Public Radio's Fresh Air. So juror Carrie Bess, who is now in her 70s, she was asked whether there were members of the jury who voted to acquit um, because of Rodney King. In other words, think about it. Uh, jurors who voted to acquit OJ for a murder because of the completely separate Rodney King incident, the beating of Rodney King. And she just goes, yes. And not only that, but she says that she is one of them. Now, I want to read the transcript here because it's so telling. Do you think there are members of the jury that voted to acquit OJ because of Rodney King? Bess, yes. Interviewer, you do? Bess, yes. Interviewer, how many of you think, how many of you do you think felt that way? Bess, oh, probably 90% of them. 90%? Did you feel that way? Yes. That was payback. Uh-huh. Do you think that was right? And then Bess throws up her hands like, there you go. So what does this really tell you? 
what this really tells you is we have a sort of crisis in our jury system when it comes to these high profile trials. These jurors are not acting as jurors. Think about it, well, why do we have jurors? We have jurors, well, why do we trust nine or 12 people to make a verdict on a life and death situation? Why would we do that? Well, we do it on the simple basis that we're finding people who are not prejudiced in the case, who are willing to look at the facts of the case, who are not going to decide based upon something else happened over there or something else happened to me and therefore I'm going to I'm going to take it out on this person. Um, and yet that's exactly what we have. So when not in every situation, jury trials still work. Um, but the key point is that when it's a race trial and it's black and white, we just cannot expect fairness. There's all kinds of shenanigans going on. And the two most high profile trials of the last quarter century clearly prove that point. In some ways, to me, it's disturbingly um, evocative of the old South. Uh, the South of the early 20th century, for example. Now think about it, if in the early 20th century, if it was an all white jury trial in the South, no problem. There's no reason to believe the Southern system of justice, the run by the Democrats, by the way, didn't work for whites. It's just that if you were a black guy accused with an all white jury, uh, you were basically a dead man or you were basically done. Uh, so when it was an interracial case in the South of the Democrats, justice essentially went out the window. And by the way, it's the same now, it's the same party, it's the same type of people. Of course, there is a little difference in now the Democrats' priorities have shifted, now they wanna get the white guy before they wanna get the black guy. But in both cases, you see the manipulation of racial politics at the expense of what? Due process of law, neutral uh, arbitration of justice, impartial jurors, all the constitutional safeguards that are put into place are thrown out when it comes to the insidious politics of race.